Hey, John Morris here, and in this video, we're going to talk about PHP data types. And data types are different ways that uh, variables or data can be uh, stored using PHP. Um, so there are a number of different data types that are available, and uh, we're going to talk about those. So the first data type is what's called a string. And a string is what you may be most familiar with and it's really just a series of characters and it can be pretty much any characters with PHP each character uh, is the same as a byte and there are 256 so there are 256 different characters possible um, so that also implies that PHP has no native support of Unicode which is something when you get later on that you'll probably be looking at but in its simplest form a string is really what you see right here um, it's just a string of, of different uh, characters uh, put together in a certain way. Um, now there's a number of different ways that you can work with strings or you can define a string. And you'll notice here that we're using double quotes and um, you can also use single quotes like this. The difference between double quotes and single quotes is that um, double quotes or single quotes will pl print what is there literally whereas double quotes will allow for variables and, and different things along those lines so for example if we were to use these single quotes and we were to put something like this in there it's going to print that literally so if we save that and we come back over and we refresh we're going to actually see this printed literally whereas if we use double quotes with this then PHP is going to try and find this variable and print it out and uh, whatever it contains so you'll notice that it's empty and that's because we haven't set a value for that variable now if we were to come up here and set this to something like this and we come back over here to our script you notice that now it, it prints that out okay so that's the difference between double quotes and single quotes and so strings can be defined in many ways um, you may get a string from your database you may set it explicitly like this however you do it that that's strings are really kind of the basic uh, format of working in, in PHP. The next one is what we call an array and arrays are when you start working with uh, databases especially you're going to be dealing mostly with array data because when PHP gets data from a MySQL database it typically comes in the form of an array or it can come in the form of an object but more commonly it comes in the form of an array and typically what's called and associative array. Okay, so the way an array works is really uh, an, uh, an array is just a, um, it's really a list, it's a associative list. And so let's come down here and let's just look at that. So in order to create an array, let's say you want to create an array ex explicitly, okay, then you would use what's called the array function and you might do something like this. Okay, that's the array function, and in that array, array function, then you would define key value pairs, what are called key value pairs, for that particular array. And those key value pairs would look something like something like this. And we'll, we'll just go with a standard example from the manual. Okay. Okay, so these are what are called key value pairs. This is the key and this is the value. And so 
when you store data in a MySQL database, it's almost always stored this way because you're storing it as um, kind of the name of that uh, that data and then the actual data uh, itself. And if we go into uh, our MySQL and we go, let's say, let's go into WordPress and we'll go to the posts. You can see it's a associative array, really, because you have the name of this content is post title, and then you have the actual post title itself. And so, uh, if you were to look at this in an array, uh, it would be something like post title, and then it would be hello world so this is kind of the name of that con or that data and this is the actual value of that data so we call these key value pairs this is the key this is the value and if we were to then come down and we were to access this array we would do something like echo and we would do Remember, we stored this array as this variable, so all this information is stored in this variable. So now we can access it uh, like this. So we're accessing it. What we're going to do is we're going to write the the key, okay, and it's going to echo the value. So if we come back and we go to our little script here. You can see it echoes hello world. So it echoes the value of that key. All right, so that's what arrays are useful for, and that's why when you're using a MySQL database, you're going to be working almost exclusively with arrays. Now, uh, there's two types of arrays, and I've already mentioned one. One is the associative array that works like this, where there's kind of a custom name here. You can also have what's called an indexed array, where they may uh, the data that you get may not have a key associated with it. So what what uh, PHP does is that it automatically puts it into an array. When it puts it into an array, it automatically indexes it. So you may actually have this data stored like this in an indexed array, and it just continues down. And so if you wanted to uh, work with that data, then you would do something like this. we come back to our script and now we have the data for uh, the zero in that indexed array if we wanted the two oops, then we just change this to two and we come back over and it's going to give us the value for the two the second all right so that's dealing with arrays and, and the difference between associative and indexed arrays ultimately what you're dealing with is key value pairs now again almost always when you get data from a mysql database it's going to be returned as an associative array just like this and it's going to have the whatever the the uh, field the name of the field is in the database and then it's going to have the title or the actual value of that that content so post title post content etc etc so that's that's dealing with arrays um, working with PHP get used to dealing with arrays because you're going to be doing it uh, quite a bit and um, it's very actually very useful it's a very easy and, and nice way to get a whole ton of data and have access to very specific parts of it and do some really creative things so uh, that's arrays Next, we're going to talk about objects. And sometimes when you get um, data from a database, it may be stored as an object. But again, most time associative array. Objects are really when you write a PHP class and you go to reference that class, then um, you're going to be working with an object. Okay, so again, when we're talking about objects, or when we're talking about classes, we're going to be talking mostly about objects. So here's the classic example from the PHP manual. And you have this class called foo with a function that says do foo. And what it does is it 
uh, echoes this string called doing foo. And then when you come down here, you're basically going to initialize the class, instantiate the class. Really what you're doing is you're creating a new instance of this class and then you have access to the functions or the methods within that class. Okay, so if we were to just save this and come back, you can see it echoes out doing foo. And that's exactly what the class has it do. So when you're working with objects, you're going to uh, always uh, create a new instance of it, uh, of that class. And then you're going to reference the methods within that class using uh, this little uh, arrow right here to point to, you see it references this function. Okay, So that's what an object is. Uh, and it allows you to work with classes and use class data, use class um, properties, use class methods, which methods and properties are just variables and functions inside of a class. They just give them a different name. Okay, so um, it's really the same thing. So when you're working with objects, that's what you'll you'll get. Again, there may be instances where you're working with certain databases, like for example, the WordPress database a lot of times you'll get data returned as an object and you'll you know you'll have to reference that data this way um, and of course there's all, all kinds of documentation in WordPress for that but again that that that's working with objects typically it's when you're working with uh, a class alright so we have a couple more we're gonna talk about um, booleans and then we're gonna talk about integers so let's go ahead and go into booleans and so booleans are really just true or false type stuff so there will be instances where you want to test for uh, something. So let's say, for example, let's say message now equals three, right? And let's make it an integer. And let's create a test. So if message equals three then we want to echo yes and if not if not we want to echo no okay so what we're really doing is we're setting up kind of a we're setting up a conditional which based off uh, is based off a of boolean. So if this evaluates true, we're going to echo yes, and if it doesn't, we're going to uh, echo no. So let's go to our script here and see what we get. And so we get yes. You'll notice that we end up with yes. It also echoed out down here because we had message echoed out straight down here. Anyway. Um, when you're dealing with booleans, that's really what you're dealing with. You're de dealing with something that ultimately evaluates to uh, true or false. Now you could come in here and you could set this to true and come down here and we get rid of this equals three and save this. All right, so now we have message equals true and we have a conditional that just has that variable in it. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to evaluate whether message is set to true or false. So if we come back over and we refresh, you'll notice that it comes with it comes up with yes. And that's because we've set it to true. Now if we come in here and we set this to false and we refresh, now we get no. Okay. So that's how uh, a little bit about how booleans work and of course you could do some conditional above here that says you know if you know something equals something then message equals true and if not it equals false and then if message equals true or false and you could build conditionals upon conditionals using booleans like that okay so uh, that's what booleans allow you to do it's really just true, true or false you're pretty much always going to use it with some sort of conditional or some sort of check um, to you know to see if something is true or false or whatever so um, very 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 helpful the last data type we're going to talk about is called integers and 
Uh, we just seen kind of an example of that. If you put this number in here like this, then its data type is going to be an integer, okay? And so why is that important? Well, when you're dealing with data, especially in MySQL database, you can set it so that, for example, in in the field for this ID, you know that what you want is a, a, a is an integer. So you can set it so this will only accept an integer and it'll throw an error if it's not an integer. Now if you were to come in here with PHP and you were to put this into a string like this, then MySQL would see this would be seen as a string and could cause you errors. Okay. So the way that you define this variable can define it as an integer or as a string. Even though it's still the number three, defining it in a different way can affect it like that. Now, PHP, um, you know, it works with data types and, and attempts to automatically convert data types so that you don't run into that issue. So if you do put a three like this uh, and try to put it into a... a uh, MySQL database field that is set to be integer only, you know, PHP may try to convert it seeing that it knows, can look at it and see that it's the number three and that it is in fact an integer. It may try to, con to, to convert it for you to that correct data type so it can be loaded in MySQL, but it's a lot simpler for you if you just define it correctly. Okay. So, and with integers, you can work with decimal numbers, you can work with negative numbers, you can work with octal numbers, you can work with hexadecimal numbers, you can work with floating point numbers, you can work with all kinds of different numbers. So, those are integers. For the most part, with the data types, the things you're going to be working with the most are strings and arrays. Um, probably objects next, and then and then integers. I mean, integers will kind of be mixed throughout, typically, but... Most of the time it's going to be strings and arrays that you're going to be working with. So that's a little bit about data types. When you hear someone talk about data types, those are the different types of data uh, that are available in, in PHP and a little bit about how to work with them. Again, as we go through the course, get some more advanced stuff, you're going to get a lot more work with um, these individual data types and see a little bit more how they all come together. Uh, but just a little bit of a uh, primer, so when you see data types, you know what uh, someone's talking about. All right, so hope you enjoyed the course, and I'll talk to you again soon.